Hello, and welcome to episode 24 of Sarastro's Star Wars Legion painting series. In this episode, I'm going to paint the AA5 speeder truck from Atomic Mass Games' Star Wars Legion. The speeder truck presents lots of opportunities for us to enjoy some nice heavy weathering, and also to play with our own design ideas. It has a fully sculpted interior and side doors that can be left in the open or closed position. Here's a quick overview of how I'll be painting the AA5 speeder truck. I'm going to first glue together the sub-assemblies for the model before priming the various parts. I'll also be providing the main colour for the outer panelling, showing how you might do this both with a brush and the airbrush. I'm then going to paint the interior of the truck, where I'll be giving the most attention to the parts that will actually be visible, such as the monitor displays and the driver, before gluing the main sub-assemblies together. We can then work on the exterior of the truck, where I'll be having some fun adding some coloured markings, glowing thrusters, and plenty of weathering that will include some chipping effects, streaks, and scratches. As usual, I've provided more precise timestamps in the video description to help you find the specific parts of the process that you might need. Let's begin. Although it has quite a number of parts, the speeder truck is actually very simple to put together. It's important to decide how much of it you actually want to assemble before priming or painting, however, because if you want to spend time painting the interior, it'll be much easier to do before gluing the main sub-assemblies together. So I'm initially just gluing the smaller parts to create the main pieces of the vehicle, which I'll then be priming separately. I'm also not gluing down things like the chairs for the time being, as they too will be easier to paint whilst off the vehicle. I've chosen to have one of the two doors permanently closed, but we'll be leaving the other unglued to keep my options open. Here I'm just dry fitting the inner walls to check how things fit together. I'm now priming all of the individual parts in black using the airbrush. You could of course use a rattle can here instead, although I think a rattle can prime in grey would make more sense, just as I did with the ATST back in episode 7. You can see that I've chosen to mask off some of the main parts of the sub-assemblies where the pieces will be glued together. This is just so that I'll be gluing plastic to plastic, however you could just as easily scrape the paint off those areas instead when the time comes. I'm now using Vallejo's Cold Grey to apply a grey midtone, holding the airbrush at a bit of an angle so that some of the recesses remain dark if possible. If you primed in grey, you might just have to do a bit more shading of some of the recesses later on. We can also create some zenithal highlights with this for the driver, as well as the inner walls, although they won't really be visible once the truck is fully assembled. I'm now going to brighten up the outer panelling by roughly progressing from the cold grey up to deck tan. If you don't have an airbrush, this can be done with some large flat brushes or makeup brushes, as you can see here. I'm also switching to the Vallejo model colour cold grey because I'd like a thicker consistency. A bit like you can see me doing in the ATST and the Airspeeder episodes, I'm just brushing increasingly lighter tones over the panelling. This can be done in a semi-dry brush fashion, so that less paint ends up in the more recessed areas. The finish can be as rough looking or as smooth as you like. Although I'm using a wet palette, the top surface of the paper is actually pretty dry, as I don't really want to thin the paint. This is now pure deck tan.
I'm now going further still by mixing in some ivory, mainly to try and sharpen up some of the edges. And here I'm using some pure ivory with a size 2 brush to add some final edge highlights, although this can equally be done later on. This gives us a pretty clean looking finish with just a subtle amount of texture, which you could then weather up as much as you like. If you have an airbrush, you can of course speed things up quite a bit. Here I'm thinning some deck tan with airbrush thinner. And after a quick test on the underside of the truck, which nobody's going to see, I'm now applying this mostly from a semi top down direction to all of the outer panelling of the vehicle. There aren't actually many curved volumes here, so not much opportunity to create interesting gradients, unlike with the AAT for example, so it's okay if things seem a little flat. All we're really doing is establishing the main panel tone, with some gentle zenithal variations of light and shade. If you're curious about the airbrush that I'm using, this is the Iwata Revolution CR, which has a 0.5mm nozzle and I think is perfect for basic duties like this. I'm building up the tone further with a second light layer to ensure I've reached pure deck tan for the brightest areas. There's also a part of the underside of the side panels that will be visible near the back of the truck, which you can see here. I'm also providing some white zenithal highlights for the interior sections, as well as the driver. With the whole model now primed and the main colour provided for the outer panelling, we're ready to begin doing some more detailed work, starting with the interior. Because the main interior area of the truck will barely be visible, even with the side doors open, I'm not going to spend much time here at all. I'm firstly just sharpening up the detail with a dry brush of pure white, and I might pick out the main edges with a standard brush. At least one side of the door that leads to the cabin will be a bit more visible through the windshield, so I'm spending a little more time here firstly by adding a few marks and scratches to the door in white and dark grey. I'm now going to use some Griff Charger Grey contrast paint thinned with some medium to tint and shade all of the interior walls and floor. I'm taking a moment to soak some of this up from the larger, flatter areas. I'm now going to use some skeleton hoard for the rim of the door as well as the padding on the seats. And I'm using black templar for the two rifles as well as the back of the seats. I'm now gluing the rifles in place. And here's how things look so far. I've decided to clean up the rim of the doorway and the seats using Vallejo's English uniform, German yellow and maybe a little ivory for the edges.
and although they're not really going to be seen, here I'm just colouring the seats on the main interior. I'm now painting the monitor displays using black, before drawing on some small patterns in white to suggest various display elements. And I'm now laying some colour on top, using various tones from Vallejo's fluorescent range. You might also want to paint some of the buttons on the dashboard using whatever colours you like. And here I'm just sharpening some of the edges with a pale grey. I've also decided to add some panel displays near the door, although these won't usually be visible whilst gaming. With the interior complete, I'm now going to paint the driver, and I'm starting with some black Templar contrast paint, which I'm using for the levers and the lower legs. And I'm using snakebite leather for the belt and the strap that runs across the chest. I've chosen scale colours Canterbrick Blue mixed with a little black for the suit. And this is Thar Brown mixed with black for the padded sections of the outfit. I went with the more yellowish Iroko for the gloves. And Vallejo's blue grey pale for the buckle. For the face, I'm using scale colours Black Hurt Brown and Harvester Flesh for the darker and lighter areas respectively. Most Caucasian skin tones would be fine here. This is the darker tone, and you can see that the paint is translucent enough to allow the Xenothal highlights to show through nicely. I'm using this for the mouth area, as well as the ears and the area around the eyes. I'm now using the lighter tone for the rest of the skin. Next I've chosen to shade the skin, using a roughly equal mix of Agwax Earthshade and Reichland Flesh Shade, thinned down with some Lamian Medium. And I'm now using a thinned mix of Agwax Earthshade and Non Oil to shade the lighter parts of the outfit. I'm then painting the eyes in black, followed with a couple of glinting highlights of pure white. And I'm now providing a few quick highlights to the suit, using lighter versions of the base tones as usual. My main focus however remains on the face, where I'm using scale colours Lilith Yellow to brighten the tone in a couple of stages. I'm now gluing the driver to his seat, 
and the seats to the truck, making sure that at least the right-hand lever fits into the hole provided. Here, I'm just removing any masking tape from the inner walls, or scraping any paint from the areas where the parts are going to join together. And we can now glue all of the inner walls in place. You could now paint the outer sections individually before gluing them on, but I've decided to go ahead and assemble most of the rest of the vehicle before progressing. I'm not yet attaching the windshield, and I'm only dry fitting the roof, which simply clips into place, to allow me to access the interior. We're now ready to paint the exterior of the vehicle. I'm going to begin by painting all of the black details, using a roughly equal mix of Vallejo's black and dark sea blue. Using black Templar instead would also be an option here. I've thinned this just enough to allow some natural shading to occur. For the recessed areas behind the thrusters, I'm just throwing on some thinned black Templar for now. I'll be highlighting these black areas a bit later on. First I'm going to turn my attention to the main body of the vehicle. Before adding the coloured markings and weathering, I've chosen to mix a little black into some deck tan and use this to darken down a few of the individual panels that make up the outer body of the truck. The paint appears a fair bit lighter when wet, but once dry, I'm aiming to create the impression that maybe some of the panels have been replaced over time, giving rise to some subtle variation. Having a hairdryer close by can certainly help speed up the drying time. This is a nice simple way of adding an initial bit of character. Next I'm going to add some coloured markings to the vehicle, and I first spent a little time in Photoshop trying some ideas out to give me a nice clear plan to work from. You can see I've decided to add a diagonal blue stripe to the sides, which I felt would help make the truck feel a little less boxy, and then adding a few smaller accents in the complementary red-orange and yellow-orange range. I'm going to be using some masking tape to help more easily achieve the straight lines. This is 10mm wide tape, which I'm now using to firstly mask off the area surrounding the blue parts of the design. Creating your own look for the vehicle is a lot of fun, and I'd recommend having a go at coming up with some designs of your own.
I'm now going to apply the colour, and for the blue stripe, I'm using a roughly equal mix of Caspian Blue and Canterbrick Blue. I'm keeping the paint pretty thick, and dabbing it on with a piece of torn sponge. The idea here, of course, is that by leaving irregular gaps, we can very easily create the impression of the paint having chipped off through time or stress. We can also use the brush for any hard to reach areas. Notice also how I'm continually rotating the piece of sponge, so as to avoid producing any obvious repetition of the markings. Once done, we get to enjoy the most satisfying part of the process, removing the tape. If you're concerned about potentially peeling off some of the paint with the subsequent layers of masking tape, you might like to brush over a little matte varnish as I'm doing, just as a precaution. I'm now masking off the areas I'd like to paint orange. This is 3mm wide masking tape by Tamiya. To create the reddish orange tone, I'm using a roughly equal mix of Mars Orange and Kalahari Orange. And for the small yellow accents, I'm using a roughly equal mix of Sahara Yellow and Sol Yellow, along with just a touch of the orange. With the coloured markings complete, I'm now going to return to the black details, and provide some highlights by mainly adding varying amounts of white to the black and dark sea blue base tone, and maybe some ivory for the brightest highlights. I'm using a small flat brush for these vents on the sides.
I'm now going to add an initial layer of gentle weathering by first creating a generic dirty tone by mixing some black and some goby brown. You could use pretty much any dark black brown tone you like for this. I'm now thinning this down quite heavily in a spare well in the palette and I'm using a piece of sponge to dab this onto the bodywork. I'm first applying a thin application of this pretty much everywhere to introduce a subtle amount of general dirty or rain stained weathering. I'm now applying a second layer but building up the concentration around the base of the vehicle. Once we've established a bit of texture, we can also use a brush to help strengthen the gradient. We can also use this to introduce some faint streaking. This gives us an initial amount of what I might call soft weathering. Next I'm going to apply some chipping, and if you enjoy applying weathering as much as I do, it's a good idea to capture examples from the environment whenever you're out and about to use as inspiration as you can see here. I'm going to begin by dabbing on some pure ivory with the sponge, taking care to remove the excess paint on some paper first. I'm going to focus mainly on the edges where we'd expect most of the chipping to occur but we'll be adding random flecks elsewhere on the bodywork. I might also use a fine detail brush to manually add some additional chips or to extend some of the markings already present. I'm also making sure that I've picked out all of these edges. I'm now mixing a very dark grey and I'm going to draw roughly inside the boundaries of most of the white markings we just created. This helps create the impression of exposed metal with a sense of relief caused by the surrounding paintwork which we want to appear slightly raised. You can also brush over some rusty tones if you like. Here I'm using some of the secret weapon rust colours and will be varying both the quantity and intensity as I go. I'm now continuing round the rest of the truck in the same way, adding edge highlights and chipping with the ivory, followed with the dark grey, then the rust tones. This is not a fast technique by any means, so it certainly helps if you enjoy the process. We can also apply some light chipping to the laser cannons. I'm also adding some rusty streaks as I go. Next I'm going to darken the panel lines and I'm thinning a mix of sepia and black ink by De La Rowney to do this, although you could also use regular paint if you like.
can also add some additional streaking with this, varying the concentration as we go. I'm now just doing a bit of cleaning up where some of the lining came out a little thick. And this is the more purplish Old Rust, also by Secret Weapon. Next I'm drawing on a few small blaster marks, and you can use any kind of black or brown black you like for this. There's also nothing wrong with using a black or brown pencil to add some blaster marks or fine scratches. I'm now returning to the black and goby brown mix we made earlier, and I'm using this to further darken the area at the back surrounding the thrusters. An additional thin layer of this could also be reapplied to the lower part of the truck to strengthen the gradient and also to help create a more multi-layered effect. For the thrusters at the back I'm going to create a pretty quick and easy blue glow using the airbrush. I'm first going to create a mid-tone grey using a mix of stonewall grey and sombre grey, although the precise colours aren't important as it's just to establish the values and then using this to begin brightening the thrusters, as well as the surrounding part of the body where I'd expect some light to hit. We can then go in with some pure white to push the values right up for the innermost part of the thrusters. With the values in place, we can then add whatever colour we want the thrusters to be on top, and I'm using Process Cyan Ink, which I'm thinning with a little airbrush thinner. I'm applying this quite tentatively in thin layers, so as to avoid having the ink run. I also want a little object source lighting on the inner sides of the panels. After a couple of thin layers of the blue, I'm reapplying a little of the white to the innermost part of the thrusters. I'm now just applying a few quick highlights along with a touch of weathering to the remaining areas at the back. Next I'm gluing the aerial in place, and to avoid misting up the windshield, I'm now going to spray the model off camera using Tester's Dull Coat, and if you find that hard to get hold of, I can also highly recommend AK Interactive's Ultra Matte Varnish. I'm basing the model as described in the earlier episodes, the only thing I'm doing differently here is that I'm having a play with a static grass applicator to achieve a more natural looking grass effect. And I'm now using the brush on matte varnish to protect the rim of the base. To add some weathering to the windshield, I've chosen to firstly add a few scratches with a craft knife. And I'm now using a yellowish brown tone made of Sahara yellow and Gobi brown to add some dusty weathering. I'm keeping this pretty thin and I'm feathering it out or smudging it as necessary. I'm 
I'm now gluing the windshield into place. And finally, I'm adding a little colour modulation to the end of the heavy laser, where I'm using scale colours violet and mediterranean blue, and a little of the red rust to add some interest. And this completes the AA5 speeder truck. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the episode. As always you'll find a full product list in the video description below, along with links to all of the places I can be found on social media. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Star Wars Legion. Happy painting!